Hey guys, Jesse here with Vertec, and today we're gonna to talk about how to disassemble your VTK series 10 centimeter cone. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so today we have a VTK series 10 centimeter, 10 ton cone here. And I wanna show you how to disassemble this in case uh, you may have gotten it wet and you wanna dry it out or you just wanna inspect the limo harness which is uh, possibly spun inside the cone. So I have the cone clamped in a vise here. If you notice, I have it clamped on this part that's called the collar. The collar is just above the sleeve in this X-ring and just below this back shell, which is uh, the housing that holds all the electronics. You wanna make sure that when you're clamping this, you have it clamped pretty tight in a vise you don't have it clamped anywhere below this O-ring because you can actually damage the sleeve. And you can't have it clamped on this back shell because this is the piece that we're trying to spin off. So the first thing that we're going to do is pull off this adapter here. And this normally will come off by hand. If it doesn't, you may be able to uh, put a pipe wrench on it and loosen that up a bit. But typically these will just uh, unthread by hand. So once you have this off out of the way, you have this piece here, which we call the limo housing. What this does is this holds the connector that your CBT, CBT cone cable uh, actually plugs into. So in order to pull this off, I'm going to take a cone cable and plug it in. Now this is a cut cable, but you can use your regular full length CBT cable for this. So I'm gonna turn this until it finds uh, the mate connector on the inside here. And the reason why we're doing this is because when I go to loosen this up, we don't want this connector on the inside to spin because if that spins too much, it will actually shorten up that cable and start pulling the wires off the circuit board. So make sure you have a cable plugged in here. I'm gonna then take a pair of vice grips and I'm gonna clamp onto it right on this surface right here. And this piece is threaded. Righty tighty lefty loosey, so I'm going to loosen it up. And as I'm loosening it up, I am holding onto this to make sure that this isn't spinning. So once I have this good and loose, I can go ahead and unplug my cable. Just visually look inside, make sure nothing looks like it's damaged. And slide this up. And you'll see there's these two little split rings right here. These are what actually pinch this little stainless steel collar against this housing right here. And that's what prevents this from spinning when it's all assembled. So I'm gonna set those aside and now we're gonna pull off the back shell. The best way to pull this off is a spanner wrench like this. This wrench is specifically designed to fit this size back shell. If you don't have one of these, the next best thing you can use is a pipe wrench. So I'm gonna put this on and just give it a good bump and loosen it up. Once I have that loose, I'm gonna spin this off Again, just making sure that this isn't spinning. And once I have the back shell all the way loose, I'm gonna slide this up carefully. Okay guys, so now that we have the back shell removed, uh, you can see we have the limo harness exposed the circuit board, some of the seismic geophones, and I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and pull this apart a little bit more. So this plastic tube here just kind of keeps all of the wires in place when you're reassembling. So we're gonna reuse this, but for now we're gonna slide this up. And when we do that, we're just gonna make sure that we're not bumping into any electronics, knocking anything off the board, just set that aside. And then there's a couple connectors here that we're gonna unplug to remove this housing. One thing that you should do when you're at this point is also kind of look at the board and see if you notice any moisture on the board. Uh, it may look like it's got some condensation. You may see a little bit of corrosion, kind of like some green corrosion or white corrosion. And then you can actually also check out this tube and make sure that the tube doesn't have any fog or condensation in it. If it does, that's 
a good indication that the board probably got wet even if you don't visually see any water on the board. And if that happens, we would wanna go ahead and dry the cone. And you can either do that yourself or you can send it in to us. I would, I would recommend putting the cone back together, putting it in the box and shipping it to us. Then we can uh, dry it out and recalibrate it for you. If you wanna try and dry it out yourself, uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is pull off this limo harness here. So I'm going to slide this piece of heat shrink up a little, little bit. And that just loosens up the wires. And then these two connectors here have a little clip that holds them. And I'm going to push down a little tab and slide it right out of the clip. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. And that's how that comes off. There are a few more connectors on here. There's one right here, and there's a couple more on this side. If you're gonna put this in the oven to dry it, the best thing you can do is unclip the rest of these connectors. And the reason why we're doing that is we just wanna make sure that there's no moisture trapped inside the connector because that could actually be where your point of corrosion is that's causing some drifts or some connectivity issues. So we're gonna unplug all of those and go ahead and put this in the oven. Now when we dry this, we're gonna dry it at no higher than 150 degrees Fahrenheit and we suggest drying it overnight or for at least eight hours. When we go to reassemble this, we're going to plug everything back in. So let's say we just dried the board out overnight. I'm just gonna plug the connectors in. You're gonna listen for that kind of audible click as you plug these back in. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. And then we will throw the back shell on. So I'll show you that in one second. Okay, so when you go to reinstall this limo harness, it's important to make sure that you have the right connector plugged into the right side of the board. The easiest way to tell is one wire is a bit longer than the other. And if you look at your board, one connector is lower on the board than the other. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you take whatever side has the longest cable and plug it into the lowest connector on the board here. So I'm gonna plug this one in this side because it's lower and a longer cable and I'll plug this one in on this side. And again, when you plug these in, just make sure you kind of hear that audible click and that's how you know it's in all the way. Then I'm gonna take this heat shrink and slide this back over the top of the circuit board here. And this just kind of helps keep all the wires in place. Okay, so once that's reinstalled, we can go ahead and slide the plastic tube back on. And again, when you're sliding this on, you wanna make sure that you kinda of have all the wires tucked inside the tube and make sure that you don't accidentally hit the tube on any of the components on the board. Sometimes I find it helpful to kind of twist and squeeze the tube as you're pushing it down. And this tube will bottom out on this little metal shelf right here, and that's how you know it's down all the way. So the next thing we're going to do is put the back shell back on. Before you install the back shell, you wanna inspect all these O-rings. You wanna make sure that they're clean and that they are lubricated. If there's any dirt on this O-ring, what'll happen is it can allow water to enter and that's how your cone gets wet. There's also an O-ring right here and this O-ring mates up with this limo harness, uh, I'm sorry, limo housing right here. So same thing, we're gonna make sure that both of these are lubricated. You can use grease or you can use some of the silicone that comes in your pore pressure tubs, that works really well. Uh, this is a pretty new cone. Uh, these are already clean and lubricated. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this on. If you have a piece of heat shrink or a straw, it works really well to hold this connector in place. If you don't, you kinda have to fight with a little bit when you put this in and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So as I slide this down, that limo harness needs to basically stick through the top of the hole here. Sometimes it tries to get caught up on the little shelf 
that's inside here. And if that's the case, you can take either a small screwdriver, a mechanics pick, a toothpick, basically anything that you can uh, fit down in here and kind of work the connector into place. Sometimes you get lucky and it fits right through the hole where it needs to. Uh, so let me take a look inside this one. Okay. This one actually looks like we got kind of lucky and it's right in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread this on. I'm kind of visually washing that connector to make sure it's not getting caught on anything and it's still spinning. And now I have the back shell on all the way. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up. And guys, this back shell needs to be on here pretty tight. Don't forget that you are pushing this through, you know, hundreds of feet of soil and it can try and uh, twist apart if you're not careful. So make sure this connection is very tight. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get this connector all the way up to a spot where I can fit these split rings underneath that little stainless steel shelf. So let's work on that. Okay, so I was able to get the connector kind of pulled up. I actually loosened the back shell up a little bit and worked it a little with my hands and pulled it up and then retightened the back shell. And now the connector is up where it belongs. So the next thing we're going to do is take these two split rings and set them right here on this little shelf and make sure that the connector is sitting just above that. So once I have that installed like this, I'm going to take this limo harness, I'm sorry, this limo housing and thread this back on. Okay, and then I'm just gonna start threading this on and before I get this too tight, I'm gonna plug my cable back in again. And I am doing this to make sure that that harness is not spun. I'm gonna get it hand tight, take my pair of ice grips, clamp onto it, and snug this up. Go ahead and unplug that, and then the last thing I'm going to do is put my adapter back on. And that's it, that's how you disassemble, clean, inspect, possibly dry, and reassemble your VTK series 10 centimeter cone. We'll see you at the next video.